So, have you ever wondered why we have seatbelts? Like, what's the deal with seatbelts? What's the physics behind seatbelts? Why do we have them? I mean, yes, they stop you from flying through the windscreen, um, you know, and, and being cut into millions of pieces and, and making a big splat on the, on, the, on the road. So they're good for that. But what is the physics behind a seatbelt? How does it work? Let's talk about it. So, essentially, it all boils down to this equation over here on my left. And you've probably seen this equation before, but let's run through it. Let's run through what it means. And how does it apply to seatbelts? Well, this equation represents force. Okay, so we've got force on the left, which is measured in newtons. And then we've got, on the top half of our equation, we've got the change in momentum. This means delta. This symbol here is the Greek letter for delta, and it means the change in, okay? And then we've got rho, the Greek letter rho, so two Greek letters next to each other. I don't know why they don't just put it in English, but anyway. And then we've got rho, which is momentum, and that's measured in kilograms per meter per second, okay? Which is great. And then we divide that by time, okay, to get our force. So effectively, the force that we feel in a collision, or the force that anything feels in a collision, is subject to its change in momentum over time, right? So, how could we change the force of the impact? Well, we could change the momentum, but that's quite difficult, right? Because momentum is mass times velocity. I can't change a person's mass in a collision. They can't just suddenly lose 10 kilos or you know, gain weight all of a sudden. That doesn't work. So what can we manipulate? Well, we can manipulate time. And that is the beauty of the seatbelt. You see, when you're in a collision and you, your, your car hits something, you move forward and the seatbelt takes you. And then as you're moving forward, what's happening is that seatbelt is actually stretching. And some of your kinetic energy, that's your movement energy, is being converted into elastic energy in the seatbelt. So if you're now moving with less energy, you're not moving as quickly. Right? If I take away some of your energy, you're not going to be able to move as fast. And if you're not moving as fast, it means that it takes more time for you to collide with your steering wheel. So your seatbelt is effectively increasing the time it takes for you to collide with your car once the collision happens by stretching and taking some of your energy with it. Okay, so what actually happens if we increase the time between the collision and then you colliding with your steering wheel, with your car? Well, if time goes up, and momentum is staying relatively similar, if not the same, then your force would have to go down, right? It's like me saying five is equal to 10 divided by two, right? But if that becomes four, then force goes down because momentum is not changing that much. So that is effectively how your seatbelt is reducing the force on impact. And because it reduces the force on impact, you have less injuries, okay? So this is the magical physics behind your seatbelt and why you absolutely have to wear it. I think it's quite cool. Okay, well, thanks for listening, guys. I hope you enjoyed this short video on the physics behind your seatbelt. If you want to learn more about it, then absolutely go online, do some research, loads of great things online on BBC Bite Size. Um, and if you have any questions about what you want us to cover in the next video, then just put it in the comments and, and then we will get back to you and we'll try and do some videos on that. But yeah, in the meantime, like, subscribe, please help the channel grow and uh, we will see you next time. And remember to stay quantum. Bye guys.